Hello everyone, welcome to pre-launch log two. So as you can see, I'm sailing around in the morning time. I wanted to throw back the morning system on because I don't think I'd shown it in quite a while, but uh, the entire game is designed around uh, a full day and night cycle. And I don't know how long it's gonna take, but it might be some more Minecraft, it might be a little bit longer. Anyways, as you can see, I'm sailing and uh, actually cranked up the uh, I, I cranked up the uh, water um, speed, so as you can see, the boat is like rocking around a little bit more. I also lowered myself in the boat because I thought, felt it was a little hard to like lean over all the time. It wasn't very good for that. Um, but anyways, as you can see, I uh, got the boat working. Now the major thing is that this boat is actually not my own boat um, in the sense of it is on the network. So this is another boat that was uh, spawned by someone else, and I'm controlling it pretty well and you'll notice that there's not any like jerkiness around it it's all um like pretty smooth um so everything works as you expect i can pull in oh shoot i can pull in the boom and then lock it off and it locks it off across the network pull in the jib sheet uh, and it works fine so also same thing you can grab this uh this little base here and it works really good yeah, so I'm going to talk about how I did this in my uh, in-person part. So I'm pretty happy with the work I've done on the uh, network boats. Um, and I wanted to explain a little bit how I did it. So there's three or four ways that you can do networking across network. The first one is that you effectively have like an item or like a boat and you're just sending the information constantly across the network and then the boat is moving around um, according to the information that you receive. The problem is that then you have some delay in where the boat's moving and if you have some lag the boat will do one of two things. It'll either jump over um, or it'll do rubber banding where it goes too far and then it snaps back. Um, this is usually how games that are um, um, that are like Call of Duty type games work because um, it is okay if like a, a player snaps back but that could make you really sick in my sailing game. Uh, there's a few other ways that you can do it. You can have an authoritative server where you have a server that is telling exactly what is happening to all of the boats and all you do is send information up to the server of like how I move. So for example, the boat's going along and I change the rudder the, the information gets sent up to the server, the server calculates where the rudder should go and all the calculations for that, and then sends back how much the boat has changed. Um, that takes a lot of work and it's incredibly uh, intensive on a computer, so you'd have to have a server for each person uh, that's trying to play, so that's a bit, uh, a bit rough as well. Um, the other option, and which is the one that I actually followed through, is uh, using the physics to determine the position of the boat. So every person in the game will actually produce the physics for uh, everyone's boat. So even if you don't own the boat, as in it's not yours that you've generated, uh, you'll still be doing the physics calculation. But whoever owns the boat will be sending information up and say to everyone else saying, this is where my boat is. So the problem is that the physics in Unity are not deterministic. So if you have two pulses that happen on an item, um, it, those two pulses could be different even though you put the same input in. It's to do with floating point precision and uh, issues with the programming. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to spend the time to write a deterministic physics engine because that is a huge task and it's very hard. A deterministic physics engine means that if you have a boat and then you apply sail force to it, no matter where you run it, it'll always do the exact same thing. Um, that's really hard to do because you have to get rid of all your floats, which is uh, floating point um, numbers, and then uh, you have to write your entire own physics engine, and I don't have time for that. Um, so the, what, I, what I did is basically it's a check-in system. So the boat's sailing along um, on both of the servers, and if it starts drifting out on the server that or on the player that doesn't own the boat, uh, it'll slowly come back. And uh, as you can see in the game, um, it was really, uh, really pretty smooth. So if you do get out of sync, like within a meter, it'll slowly bring itself back, and then it might like zigzag a little bit, but you won't notice it in the game. And it's really good as well because um, it makes the boat feel very realistic. The boat's not going to flip around or do anything crazy because it gets information from other players. It's going to slowly push itself back. So anyways, that's uh, how I did the networking for the uh, for the boating, and I'm pretty happy with it. It's working really well. It only took me about a week. Um, I had to do some uh, other things last week, which is why there's no devlog, but it only took me about a week, and uh, I'm really glad that I put uh, all the work in initially to make sure that everything would be network ready. Um, the other thing is that, as you notice, I've changed the title of the logs. I'm getting pretty close to like launching this game. I've got sound designers on board, so I'm actually uh, changing the, the format of the logs. They'll come out probably once or every uh, once a week or every other week, 
And uh, yeah, it's basically ready to launch as soon as possible. I just have to get some ropes done and make sure that I put a few game things in there and uh, do all the rest that you need to do before you launch. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching this week. Uh, probably have a devlog next week or a pre-launch log next week. And uh, that's it. Bye. <laughs>